Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, it's a blue steel battle royale, Audemars Piguet Royal Oaks, steel cases with blue dials. It's the Jumbo versus the 15400. Two watches, five hands and 16 sides. Let the best watch win. You know both of these watches and I thought it was time since the 15400 is about to be superseded by a newer 15 500 for 2019 to compare it to the traditional jumbo. Now these watches are only one year apart in terms of serial number and they're both considered current generation as of 2018. So let's do a quick review starting with the 15400. Now this watch bowed in 2012. It replaced the 39 millimeter 15300 as the general production, relatively speaking, volume automatic Royal Oak. So it innovated by adding a 41 millimeter case that truly changed the watch from a sporty dress watch to a bit of a baby offshore as it now has almost the same footprint as a 42 millimeter offshore. It's still 9.8 millimeters thick so it's not a thick watch. It'll slide underneath a cuff but you'll find that with a lug to lug span of 51.6 and including the solid plot end links, a flare across the wrist of 54.4 millimeters. This really does wear like a 42 or a 43 millimeter watch. So the timepiece is substantial and on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist you really get a sense of it. Uh, the big difference between this and the offshore frankly is just going to be thickness. It's a big watch and I would not recommend this watch for wrists smaller than 14 and a half centimeters. Now one of the key decision points between the 15400 and the 15202 is going to be the difference in how they feel and their physical security on the wrist. I want to remind you that though the watches look similar you can get a sense of their differences as you compare the size of the links between the two watches. The 15202 and the 15400 are dramatically different in scale and that continues right down to the screws fixing their bracelets together. As you can see that the 15400 is just a more substantial watch in every respect. Now that continues in the clasp which visually looks the same. It's the same mechanism and again proportionally it's the same. Dimensionally it's different and this is just a burlier watch. On the wrist the feeling, the difference that you get, it's the difference between a Rolex Jubilee with the 15202 and a Rolex Oyster with the 15400. More differences as you look at the case of the 15400, the finishing externally with these two watches is identical. It's very high grade, but you can see that with the 15400, there's a distinct seam between the case back and the mid case that you do not have on the 15202, which is constructed as a sort of modern era take on the original 5402 jumbo and its monoblock case. So there is a display sapphire, but this case back, which is black polished to contrast with the side, is actually actually part of one block of metal, the side and the back all together. It's one of the reasons this watch is as thin as it manages to be and I'm actually going to show you the two watches side by side, sapphire to sapphire, so you can get a sense of the difference in thickness. You can even see they're distinct right down to the size of the crown with the 15400 being 9.8 and as my calipers indicate the 15202 is exactly 8 millimeters thick and there's a big difference right there. You can even see that proportionally the bezel gasket on the 15202 is a lot larger. It's a more pronounced styling element. Jump into the dial of the 15400. You could see that it is a large larger hobnail cut than what you get on the 15202. One is the petite tapisserie, it's the small hobnail, and the other is the grand tapisserie. Now both of these are cut on a pantograph lathe and they are made the old fashioned way. The offshores feature stamped dials. These are made using different templates but the same equipment. Now they were harmonized to some extent in 2012 when Audemars Piguet brought galvanizing and etching of its tapisserie dials in-house. Previously it was handled by Stern Creations. Now you can see right here that the blue is nicely matched from watch to watch, indicative of very uniform in-house fabrication. But what you'll also note is that the differences in both the hobnail and the size of the index make the watches read differently. You can see on the 15202 it's more of a traditional rounded edge lozenge style index, whereas on the 15400 I'll get as close as I can here. You can see that the edges are actually downsloped, black polished, and faceted. They are more complex indices. As a result, they read as larger and they make the 15400 a bit easier to read in the flesh. Another feature, frankly, that you should note is that both of them gained a monotone date disc for 2012. Can you imagine it was ever otherwise? And finally, of course, you have a center seconds on the 15400, whereas the 15202 has only hours and minutes, and the signature Audemars Piguet is down at six on the jumbo, whereas it 
it's at 12 on the automatic. Now, a few different uh, distinctions that really need to be called out. This watch, with an entirely different case construction, dial detailing, and movement architecture, and the movement architecture is quite different. i do my best to open this one up and show you the case back. This is the most challenging aspect of showcasing a watch that's on a full bracelet. You can't open up the case back entirely. Now here you can see caliber 3120. And the takeaway here is that the rotor is stamped and quite simple. And the bevels, as you see them executed, are actually sharply machined straight edges. And you, you can see the linear milling marks on the bevels if you loop them. This is a mostly machine finished caliber. Whereas the one on the 15202, the 2120 reference, is a hand finished caliber and you will see the differences. So this watch with a screw down crown, 50 meters water resistant, but again, a screw down crown makes a big difference. Other features, hacking seconds and a quick set date features you will want on your Royal Oak, and the 15202 has neither. So that's a tech advantage that the 15400 offers. Now the 15202, let's throw it on the wrist and get a sense of it. If your wrist is 14 and a half centimeters circumference or smaller, this is automatically the watch you want. And I do mean that because it's comfortable, it's elegant, it wears thin, and short of swimming, you can wear this watch anywhere. It's casual, it's formal, it's slim, it's elegant, it's robust, it's masculine, it's all of the above. And on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, proportionally, it looks better to my eye. I'll also add that the watch eight millimeters thick is slimmer from lug to lug. So 48.8 millimeters lug to lug, and if you include those solid end links, the flare, the ultimate width across the wrist, is 52 millimeters here versus 54.4 on the 15400. Now the watch is built differently. Of course, we talked a little bit about the case back being integral with the mid case. That is all of one piece. Some will describe this as a sort of neo monoblock, with the true monoblocks being front loaders featuring a little notch in the case side and a solid case back. The original 5402s were only seven millimeters thick. This is eight. Now the bracelet is, at least when seen in isolation, identical to what you would find on the 15400. It's just a little bit looser, lighter, and more comfortable. It's thinner and more elegant. It's also less robust, so if you're going to be really rough on your Royal Oak, go with the 15400. Now in profile, I showed you that the watch does have a wonderfully expressed bezel gasket. It's somewhere between the 15400 and the offshore in terms of how much of that gasket it shows you, but it really does break up the vertical emphasis of the case and create a more linear emphasis of layers, which I like. Now, both of the watches feature the tapisseries. Both of the watches feature white gold polished bezel bolts. They're steel on the offshores, but only the original Jumbo features a two-hand arrangement, and some are going to prefer that. It's a less busy dial, it's a less crowded dial, and both of these watches feature a micro-texture across and between the hobnails that you will want to loop. Now, turning the watch over, you can see the movement is AP Caliber 2121, originally created by Chagere Lecoult in 1967 as the Caliber 920 a Bausch. It was made for Vacheron, Audemars Piguet, and Patek, and it was only ever used by those three brands. Today, AP and Vacheron still make it, and AP, which owned 40% of Chagere Lecoult for decades now builds and finishes this movement in-house. So its heritage is JLC, but it is an AP manufacturer movement. You'll note that the skeletonized and detailed rotor is significantly more elaborate than the stamped rotor and the machined details on the 15400's 3120. You'll also note this is a rotor that goes all the way around the movement. It is annular or circular. That rail on the opposite side is mounted on four ruby rollers. There's one here, 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 and here. So you can sink it super deep into the same plane as the other bridges and make this almost as thin as a micro rotor because the rotor itself will never come in contact with the base plate or crash into the works because it's supported 360 degrees. Now on the 3120, you can see it is not a 360 degree rotor. It is a single sided mass. Jumping back to the 15202, I want to emphasize that this is an archaic movement. It has a 40 hour power reserve. It has that weird annular balance. It features a gyromax balance Yes, the same as the 3120, but it beats way at 19,800 vibrations per hour, a nearly extinct beat rate from the 60s and 70s. It's also more sensitive to shock. That said, it redeems itself with superior detailing as the anglage as well as the detail work of this movement is significantly above what you'll find on the 15400 with its sharp machined marks. Here you can see the hands of master craftsmen and there is a mirrored, optically smooth and rounded bevel to the 
the edge of every bridge that recommends this movement. Of course, it is a push-down crown, so you can pick it up just like that. While this watch is technically 50 meters water resistant, I would not test the theory. So let's start with the advantages of the original first. A hand-finished movement, and it's not even close. You may not notice too many differences on my camera, but if you were to take this under the loop or even inspect it in person with your bare eye, this is beautifully executed, like what you would see on other members of the Holy Trinity. Uh, the 3120 feels mechanical. It's like a Zenith or Shigeru Lecoult mass-produced movement. This is artisanal. Also, exclusivity and rarity. This is a rare watch. Very few of them are made. Production and finishing of this movement is slow. Deliveries of these watches are backlogged, even beyond the typical steel Royal Oak level. So you will see fewer of these, and fewer of these will be delivered. Rarity and exclusivity matter in the luxury space. Purity of purpose. Do you want a living fossil, the direct descendant of Gerald Genta's original? Only this Royal Oak is exactly that. In fact, I would say that Patek's 5711 is more different from the 3700 Nautilus, the first, than this is from the 5402. This is a direct descendant of the original. 5711 is just a modern watch that looks like the original. I'll also mention that with the cleaner dial and less going on, it has a purity of form and an elegance, both in case and dial. The watch, also a better fit for smaller wrists. If your wrist is smaller like mine, 16 centimeters or less, I recommend this. 14 and a half centimeters or less, this is mandatory. I would say this is also less subject to style changes. We've had a lot of standard mass-produced Royal Oak automatics. We had the 14790 midsize, that gave way to the 15300, that gave way to the 15400, now the 15400 in 2019 has given way to the 15500. The changes to case, movement, and dial are pronounced, whereas the jumbo changes only incrementally and infrequently. I'll also mention, if you're a romanticist and a classicist, and you love the legends of our industry and our hobby. This is one for the monuments men. You've got your Rolex no date sub, you've got your Reverso Grand Tie, you've got your 5711, yes, that is still Patek's icon, and you've got your Navitimer. Well, this is going to be your Audemars Piguet alongside your Speedmaster Professional. If you want a milestone watch from each brand, this is the one you pick up at AP, no second thoughts. Now, taking a look at the 15400, the youngster of our two, is going to be the obvious choice if you want an everyday sports watch. Let's be honest, this watch has tech and durability. 60 hour power reserve versus 40. Hacking seconds and a quick set date. The 15202 has no quick set date and it has no seconds hand. This watch, 50 meters water resistant with a screw down crown. That's a swimmable 50 meters. I would not take the jumbo swimming. The bracelet, solidly constructed, inspires confidence, substantial sports watch bracelet. And ultimately the architecture of the movement is such that with a free sprung balance and a full balance bridge, this is just a tougher movement. It was designed to power the offshore and it continues to retain all of that Royal Oak offshore durability as a pure automatic without a chronograph module. And, of course, 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate versus 19.8. This is going to be a more precise movement overall as well as a tougher one. Now, also important to mention, this is a watch that is more affordable as it retails for $17,800 versus $24,700 for the Jumbo. Also, on pre-owned markets, they both increase in value, but this one more so. As this sells for about a 57 to 60% premium over its retail price, the Jumbo about a 41 42% premium over its retail price. In the day, this is an easier watch to read with its faceted indices. It's simply easier to comprehend and it works better as a timepiece. If you have a big wrist and you don't want to wear a petite watch, this is the easy choice. It has superior wrist presence. All right, which one do I pick? Well, you don't have to ask me. I'm a bit of a JLC purist and since this watch does have JLC DNA, and I'm also a classicist and a little bit of a romanticist. This is my choice. It appeals to me emotionally in every way, whereas this one is more of an intellectual appeal. You guys let me know in the chat box below, are you a romanticist or an intellectual? It's fair to be both, and you can pick either one, but let me know your favorite. 15400, 15202. 15400, 15202. I think that's a tie.